Hello everybody! In my last video, I talked about the Suikoden, our own Asian superhero universe. 108 warriors getting together to fight against injustice and a corrupt government. Great story! Some underdogs united in their resistance against a society that never liked them. And some of them even have tattoos. Yes, but seriously, the Suikoden is deeply rooted in Eastern literature, philosophy, and art history. And when Kuniyoshi illustrated the Ukiyo-e series in the early 19th century, during Edo time, he created a real hype. Because of this series and Kuniyoshi, tattoos, once introduced as punishment, became a symbol of anti-authority. And for some people, especially in Japan, they still are. Let's take a look at some of those ancient tattooed warriors and what makes them so special. Like I explained in the last video, not all of them have tattoos. When they were first put onto paper in China hundreds of years before, but Kuniyoshi came up with individual designs for several of them, drew and have them carved and printed as ukiyo-e. And because of their popularity back then, those tattoo designs and tattooed heroes are used as cool tattoos nowadays too. One of those heroes is Chojun. He is usually depicted as a 32-year-old man with a large white body, very muscular and an excellent swimmer. Maybe what you'd call a macho man today. I will tell you the story, but I have to warn you, it doesn't end well, but it's still uplifting somehow. Cho Jun and his brother originally earned their daily bread by the fish market. Not by selling fish, but rather by relieving boat passengers of their positions. Not very honorable, but apparently successful. After running this market for years, they decided that their current situation was getting a little difficult. Because of this, they rather left the town in order to join a band of warriors on the way to Ryozanpaku, the natural fortress, joining the other 106 heroes. There, Chojun became the military commander, and especially his extreme skills in swimming were widely admired. Legends were told that he was able to hold his breath for seven days and nights underwater. Real tattooed hero. Like Aquaman, doesn't he have tattoos too? During the final battle of the 108 heroes of the Suikoden, they laid siege on the castle of the enemy army, and it seems that it would become very hard to beat them, as they were holed up in a fortified safe place. Their battle was at a standstill, kind of anti-climax. Something decisive had to happen, and it was up to Chojun, the general, to take the initiative. Chojun proposed to sneak into the castle through the water gate. And it was he himself who did it and led his army, of course. Real hero generals don't just give commands, they lead by example. Who doesn't like a character like this? Let's take a look how Chojun's story developed by looking at these two different artworks. This iconic image of Chojun appeared in the Suikoden picture book by Hokusai. As you can see, he doesn't have tattoos, as his tattoo had not been mentioned in the book. Later on, as Suikoden became popular, Kuniyoshi created his own series of the Suikoden as Ukiyo-e, the very Ukiyo-e series that brought him eternal fame. The works were based on the episodes and personalities of these heroes who were cast out of the world infested with injustice, and each work vividly depicted their appearance and activities through pictures and descriptions. In this, one of the most iconic of all his pictures, Chojun is just emerging from the water breaking the sluice gate with his overwhelming power. On top of the gate, behind the warrior, you see a shishi head. If you don't know what shishi is, check out this video of mine. Even individual hairs on children's are finely and beautifully rendered. This level of detail requires unimaginable skill, and only a first-rate woodcarver could have been able to execute the painting template for this ukiyo -e. The lower right of the image shows an explanation of the moment. Kuniyoshi sometimes felt the need to add this to artwork, depicting legends, etc. 
But back to the story of Chojun breaking through the gate, the defenders of the castle though had had an idea of this weak spot in their defensive lines and had lain a trap. The breaking of the gate is causing the large bells attached to it to ring out, alerting the enemy to his whereabouts. He is fiercely attacked by bows, spears, and falling rocks, and eventually dies in battle, like a real hero. You can see in the image that countless spears pierced his tough and muscular physique, but his strong mind exterminates the pain and keeps him fighting until the end. This ukiyo-e shows his final moments before he is failed in the overwhelming attack by enemy soldiers. Kuniyoshi captured the admirable figure of this heroic man who was about to meet his fate with great strength. This particular scene is actually said to be a creation of Kuniyoshi. Reformed criminal becomes warrior for justice and sacrifices himself for greater good and his friends. A truly heroic story, right? Kuniyoshi is showing Chojun to have large-scale tattoo, despite the character not originally being described as tattooed. Why did he do that? It is not only to show his strength, but it might also something to do with the image of water, which is so important in Chojun's story. The tattoo shows the serpent, which was considered the water god, the mountain god and the god of the rain and water. All across Asia, you find those water dragons as protective spirits. It makes sense to have such a creature tattooed on you if you fight in or with water, right? For all you tattoo artists among my followers, you might have noticed that even though the design is very Japanese, Chojun does not have the Japanese tattoo in a shape like we often admire nowadays. Kuniyoshi is showing a full body suit on Chojun, but not with a clearly shaded frame, but more like cloudy dots as the background. This is called Akebono, the form before the now well known Mikiri style. Mikiri style was not created back then yet. Chojun had the ability to manifest his spiritual experiences, some say. Perhaps for this reason, after his death, he was said to have been enshrined as special general in addition to his original divine status as the 108th star. This strong image of Chojun fascinated the people of Edo period a lot. So already back then, some people got Kuniyoshi's image tattooed and this continues until today. Many men long to be strong and righteous like Chojun, fighting and dying valiantly so they got a tattoo of superhero who has a tattoo himself. How brilliant Kuniyoshi's work is! Many other artists illustrated Suikoden too and created images of Chojun, but none other has been used as a tattoo this many times. The way Chojun threw himself into protecting the village and its people probably also inspired the firefighters to get his likeness tattooed. At least they imagined themselves in this role, and for them water was an essential part of life too, of course. Nowadays, we see Chojun tattoos all over the world, not only in Japan or elsewhere in Asia, but also in Europe and USA. Do you think Chojun is such a cool hero and deserves to be admired like this? Why or why not? Who is your personal hero? Would you like to get your hero tattooed? Let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching today. Have a good day and good night. Bye! Mata ne!